Yeah, right. Yeah. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with a behavioral specialist, a life expert, the man, the myth, the author. Uh, got a couple of companies, and I must admit, mate, super impressive uh, portfolio, seven figures seven figure property portfolio and an amazing human being i am joined by brendan giebel um super super pumped to have you on my little podcast mate and um yeah i've been really really looking forward to catching up with you how are you going yeah good it's good to be here and we always have a good chat so it's gonna be cool where we go here yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to it. The last time we caught up, mate, I don't think we both of us came up for a breath of air. It looked like we had a mouthful of marbles and all the rest. Um, mate, I've been been so impressed. Like as soon as I got to know you, well, I suppose I knew of you first before I got to sort of know you. Um, super inspired, mate, to be honest, by what you do, um, the, the message that... Um, I perceive that you're sharing with the world your purpose, your passion, like you are a man who is on a mission and you seem to be really, really out there. Mate, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear just a little bit about your story, Brendan, like a little bit about you, probably more than an elevator speech, but just if you could sort of chuck it all in a wheelbarrow and bring it on out for us, what is, who is Brendan? Yeah, well, we'll try not to go too long, eh? but I suppose... Going back through my high school years, like I was pretty shy, pretty quiet, but I just desperately wanted to be confident. And that was kind of like a driving thing for me for a while. But as I went on, as you know, you know, kind of problems compound a little bit. I was fortunate enough to have my kind of rock bottom moment in my early 20s. So kind of led me to here. But, you know, I, I was struggling with females. I even got to the point where I've had physically vomited when I was talking with a highly attractive female one night, just like from all the nerves and I was just had to run off. Um, I got into the fitness space and then it's kind of like the rabbit hole. And then I was thought I had to then have a six pack to be able to get females or attract females and they, for them to want me. So I kind of went down that rabbit hole and then cause I didn't have those underlying problems fixed. You know, I was binge eating out, working fly and fly out. And then I'd like shove my fingers down my throat, trying to vomit it up was doing excessive workouts and you know over a period of time from that happening over a few years something's got to give right and then mm. so that's kind of when I had that real which is now the best experience because it's pushed me to where I am now yeah and yeah I nearly jumped off a seven-story building I was just like fuck I'm out I'm done um and then from then you know something happened and I just made a decision and I'm like something's got to change although it didn't change exactly to where I am now it took like six years before I even started to reach out for help I was trying to do things myself mm. um, and then yeah I've kind of got to where I am and now it's uh, going through everything that I realized a lot a big thing for me was that I didn't get what I wanted from my father when I was younger mm. so for me now that's the biggest thing like I don't want anyone else to experience what I did and every person that I can help makes me better too so mm. I can be the best man and best father that I can be. That's kind of a shortened version, I suppose. Wow, that's pretty sharp, mate. I didn't. I um. I obviously didn't know a lot of those those key points. Like that's some some heavy. That's some heavy shit. I mean, I must admit, I was caught up on the six pack thing. I think that's what's been my fucking problem too. <laughs> yeah. But um, got to risk it for the biscuit. That's um, it. <laughs> the yeah, that's that's some heavy stuff, and that's a lot of pain, and you know, a lot of pain for quite some time. Is that um, would I mean I don't really want to make an assumption though. Like, would, is that one of the the big drivers? Because you you've had a great success rate with with people helping people through their pain, their their you know addictions of varying degrees and, and mental disorders and depression and, and things like that. So you obviously had a great success rate there. Is that, so your experience, your, your pain, your, you know, your history, is that is what's led you to, to where you are now as part of the process? Yeah, definitely. I actually even got to a point where, cause I was working on myself so much people were like, what are you doing? Like they could notice a difference. And then they were asking like, what are you doing? You know, can you help me? And I was like, sure. 
And in that process, helping myself too, I just started filming videos, created mm. a Facebook page, posted videos, grew a following of, you know, five, 6,000 people doing that, which I never thought would go there. And then one thing led to another. And, you know, that's kind of where I got here by doing that and being like, man, I actually really enjoy helping people. And I think too, from that experience, like it's more than that, right? It's more than just doing and helping them. It's like, I know what it feels like and mm. consistently working on myself allows me to help other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause when I, when I, um, you know, I look at you, your stuff looks great online and various platforms and, you know, I, I sort of, I take my time a lot now when I when I look at what people are doing or if I'm curious or interested on something and I take my time and so I t- took my time having a read through some of your stuff and I can see that in there it's it's almost like that empathetic perspective it's like you've walked you know those those miles in um in other people's shoes you've gone through that pain and I think that adds that that beautiful blend of wisdom you know for one of a better the technical term perhaps we've rolled around in our own shit for a bit of time and we know yeah. okay this is how this is how it works but then you've got that that it's coupled with a great level of intellect as well you know you've done a lot of it learning and got a lot of knowledge and education and is that how you sort of it's almost like this this path chose you you didn't go out of your way to be like okay this is what i'm going to do i'm going to do this you you've kind of you know the universe or whatever has sprinkled some fucking clouds and stardust around the place and and popped you here (laughs) yeah yeah well i was actually blind to it like you know a lot of people are walking around asleep like as or half asleep not aware to things when when you increase your awareness you can start taking in signs and signals. Everything's a sign and signal and all that mm. kind of thing. Looking back over my life, in helping people, like that was something that I could see all the time, but I just wasn't aware of it. And then when it came to this point when I had the chance to go, yeah, let's do this. Like, let's go all in. Let's do it. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's definitely going back to what you said before, the sympathy, empathy. Like, I don't have sympathy for them, but I've got empathy because mm. I know what it feels like. And I think... I don't want to go too down this path, but so many people and like, you know, in this fitness space too, you've got personal trainers that it's like, you can't do something for yourself. How can you do it for other people? Like I know psychiatrists that drink every night, like how can you potentially help someone if you don't do that? Like mm. it's kind of like something where it's like, you have to do it yourself to be able to help people. Yeah. You have to be able to do that. And I think, that's the thing that I really strive for is like I'm constantly improving it means I can improve other people and help them because yeah. if I wasn't doing it for myself I couldn't do it yeah and that's where the wisdom and that comes from the life experience and and working with people and, and then you know linking that back to yourself and learning from other people's mistakes and stuff too mm. yeah it's a really good point hey it's it's long time ago uh one of my mentors said to me and in alignment with what you're saying, he was like, you know, before you embark on this new journey of, you know, working with people's mental performance and stuff like that, he was like, make sure your fucking house is clean. And I was like, oh, well, I'm never going to be a fucking man. <laughs> How long is a piece of fucking string? Like, I'm never going to get a, a shot at this. And and then he said, like, what you just said then, it's, it's like constantly focusing on self working on self um sharpening the tools you know doing the reintegration the healing that whatever you need or we need um and that what's that law the one to the many you know working on self so that we can do that for others um which i think was a big learning because i was like oh fuck yeah (laughs) yeah but but as as long as you're you were improving hey because if you're not yeah was it either growing or dying or something like that anyway yeah the um i'm really interested because a lot of this obviously has come um i know you you do a lot of work with men uh which is really cool i've so many uh thoughts and questions i wanted to ask and even coming from the fitness 
uh context the fitness industry as well like it's such an interesting area men are, men do fascinate me not in the yeah. <laughs> it's got to be very clear what i mean yeah. comes to, but yeah. men 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 um men do really fascinate me and uh, and i wonder like it's such a niche that that you work with. I know you work with females and men and stuff like that, but you you obviously run a lot of programs for men. Like in your own in your own words, you I saw a bit on your website where you, where you had said you know um, stop following, start leading. You know to to really be a man, stop following, start leading. What what does that mean in your words? Like I know those are your words, but. <laughs> association that you that you have with that yeah it's a couple of things right so it's like stop following societal beliefs of what has happened over time like it doesn't have to keep going on like that yeah and stop following beliefs that have been pushed down from your parents um and and that kind of thing too and start Mm -hmm. leading your own life become the leader of your own life because if you're not leading your own life you can't do it for anyone else and you know to me a man is like female, males, equal, yes. The same, no. There's different roles, right? To be a leader, like you're the you want to be the leader of your your family and your whoever's around. Mm-hmm. If you're following, you can't be a leader. Mm-hmm. And then you you know, yeah, look at some of the world leaders, they're not leaders, right? They're still following stuff. So you need to be a leader and you have to stop following first to be a leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. The so what what would beyond sort of like just or beyond not following what what a what would a a key attribute or characteristic be of a leader? Like what what sort of springs out for you, Bren? And what are you? What would you be looking for? Um, it's a good question. I would say you know, just following what he believes in and bringing people up with him, like constantly improving and bringing people up with him and, and kind of leading the way for for others and for his family, right? That's kind of, it's not about leading everyone. It's about being the leader of your own life and your family. Yeah. You know, people that want to lead countries and whatever they can, or leave movements and that's up to them. But mm. the main thing for a man is leading his own life and then his family as well. Yep. Love that. Yeah, such a good, yeah, such a good uh insight. What what's it like with men, right? Like, I mean, our our gym here, we would be 65, 70% females, like without a doubt. Um then obviously the remainder being a male demographic with the mind gym it is like easily a 50 50 split females men yeah the, what what's a comment what's your sort of hypothesis your your educated guesstimate of like what's what's the common thread that the the challenges that men face like if you were to grab a bundle grab a bunch of common threads that you see um what are their challenges and maybe maybe i'll give you a bit of a demographic like maybe i don't know maybe late 20s early 30s through to 50 maybe yeah yeah there's a lot of um there's a lot of anger a lot of anger issue whether it's expressed or suppressed Mm -hmm. um i feel like anger like is one of the a big thing for them also separation there's a lot of people that are separated going through that kind of divorce and, you know, trying to get over partners and do all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, And then maybe it's, you know, who comes to me, but there's a lot of people, especially I think with everything that's gone on in the world, anxiety too, or, you know, the uneasiness of of what's happening in the world and trying to deal with all that stuff. Say Mm. like just to put it in a little bucket, I would say those would probably be the three, three that I see. Yeah. Most. Yeah, anger's a wild one, eh? And then you pour some pour pour some uh, mid strength lager in there, and and a few rumbalis and coke, and up it comes to the surface. And <laughs> old mate, forty two punching on in the main street somewhere. Yeah, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. 
Yeah, it's an interesting, I've just, I, I still, you know, I've got my own little theories and stuff and things that I've seen. And I know in the fitness, in the fitness industry, especially with a place like ours, like we fall in the functional fitness category, CrossFit category, the, like we've got females in here that deadlift and lift as much as the men. And I see the alpha males come in and they come in for a trial and, you know, old mate was the captain of the first 15 or he was fucking this when he was a young fella and he just watches the mum of three kids just like clean and jerking some savage fucking weight. So like <laughs> a small European car, she's just pressing over her head and he's like, to fuck with this, I'm out. <laughs> and like they don't come back and I think, oh, man. And then you see the guys that are a bit more aware, that probably done a bit of work, that, you know, not not many fucks to give um comfortable and man they just thrive they really thrive and they they evolve and they blossom and they grow um but yeah that's that's been especially in the fitness industry that has been my observations guys just man they're still you know they're in their 40s but they're still the captain of the footy team and it's like no one gives a fuck like you're good man just the way you are you're fine yeah Um, yeah, still living the good old days. <laughs> yeah, as, a as they would call it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, what what's a memorable moment in your career so far? Like working with, um, you know, being a, a behavioural specialist, working with men, working people through their troubles and their traumas. What any big highlights, Brendan, that jump out for you? Um, yeah, probably. One um, that that's, that comes to mind, I've obviously had a lot, but one comes to mind is in two sessions I had this guy uh, working with this guy and he was addicted to meth for 28 years, I think. Two oh. sessions it was gone. And oh, he just my God. Clean. Like he actually said, I need to go for a second. And I'm like, all right, cool. And he had to just go out, open the door, and he's like, that person's gone. Been clean. That was about 12 months ago, been clean since. But – not just for, so that was really cool but what I happened after that was like just made that so much better for me because he getting him getting off it three other people around him in his life just went clean turkey because they were, they were like if he can do it I can do it uh, so that ripple effect from that so it was like him doing the work helped three other people his partner and his drug dealer actually got off it because oh. then <laughs> and his drug dealer's partner so wow. he helped those people and that will always be in my mind like that will be always there just how how powerful it is and how instant things are like you know if you really wow. want to do so you can let go of things right mate and, that um, is a fucking mic drop moment it's like boop, yeah, yeah my job here is done yeah mate Oh, congratulations. That's that's next level. That hey, is- I, I was just there. He did the work, hey? Yeah. Another another thing too, I just popped in. I had a phone call with a guy and, um, yeah, he was depressed and kind of chased it back to a few things. And it comes back to his father. And that's another point. 90%, I would say 90% of my clients have a dysfunctional relationship with their father. Mm-hmm. Whether they he didn't treat them right, whether he was a non-existent or anything a dis- dysfunctional relationship with their father 90 percent of them so if we can make fathers better i feel like the world is going to be a better place not yeah. saying just that but you know we can so anyways kind of chased it back and so his father said he was when he was four or something that his was a disgrace to the his last name so he was kind of like that was really close with his mum. I said, when did you get depressed? When my mum died. I'm like, hmm, interesting. So what happened there? Like, why did you get depressed when she died? Because then he realised that it was because he thought he was left with his father then because of that. Um, and, yeah, within 35 minutes, I think we just had a phone call for 35 minutes and he'd gone and he started laughing. And he goes, I haven't laughed like that for so long. And I'm like, don't laugh, though, because you, you'll fuck up your depression. And he goes, he yeah. laughed and he said, no, nah, I don't know. I don't think I'm depressed anymore. And I was like, 35 minutes on a phone call and you just tell me. And then he sent me a message like a week later, he's off all medication and everything. 
and I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's crazy. But it's just that as soon as you understand things about yourself, that they don't need to, yeah, happen anymore. And it, it, it's it's I suppose to it, the questions like that's quite a funny. One. Don't you dare start laughing, man! You're gonna fuck with your depression. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think you know, good thought provoking questions, very strategic. <laughs> um you know can get a great result that's unreal mate yeah so funny that's the best um the oh i've got a good question for you here's a good question you know Hit me. if you want some good stuff you got to ask a good question so <laughs> going on going on the theory that this will be one of the best fucking podcasts that someone's going to pick up nice little subtle podcast something just like light and breezy they've decided to listen in and they'll be so grateful that they did after this question. This question is the question of all questions. So, like, what have I not asked you <laughs> that if I did ask you, it would make this the fucking best podcast ever? Hmm. You're like, what a shit, what a shit. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a good question. <laughs> oh, it, it, honestly, I believe it'll be the best. It, it's, yeah. What, what should you, have, what have you not asked me? Yeah, that if I, look, if I did ask you this question, it would just, it would make this the best podcast ever. <clears throat> um, I would say what my opinion is, or what my findings or opinion is of why people are the way that they are right now and then how they can fix that. Yeah. I like that. So why are people the way <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what <is it? laughs> so so why are people the way they are? And like and and what do you think we could to, as as generally what could we do about it? Yeah, so I think the first step to understand is everything is a learnt behaviour. You know, we're not born with fear of public speaking or, you know, anxiety or all that kind of, as much as people go, oh, it's from as long as I can remember, you know, it feels like it's born. Everything's a learnt behaviour. Mm -hmm. Our parents are, as long as, as we don't want to hear it, most sometimes they're our biggest teachers. Mm -hmm. So if you can understand that everything that you have that you've got a problem with it's learned and most likely it's not yours you've picked it up from somewhere that's an instant realization to go fuck like why am i carrying something that's not mine yeah then i can change it and it's just about understanding it's like asking like get curious about yourself why have i got this why is this a problem for me why do I, why is this keep happening um and the more you can learn from what's going on in the past the more you can obviously move forward yeah. but yeah that's the, the two biggest things is to understand that most people's problems are not theirs and then it becomes a conflict because they realize that it's not theirs and it's not true to who they are mm. and you know that's how they they realize that so yeah everything's a learned behavior and you know if you don't like it it's probably not yours yeah <laughs> that's so good mate that is so good so as a as a as a solution to that that are they best to like um either ask you know or what am i what where did it come from what what can i learn from this from this learnt you know behavior or, or problem or, or then obviously we'll, we'll come and catch up with somebody like yourself or something what would be what's like you say somebody listening they're just like ah oh, fuck that that shit cunt part of me, I must have got that from somewhere. <laughs> that anxious part of me or you know, something probably more general. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, the overeating, the emotional eating, the anxiousness, the depression, if I got that from somewhere, if I've learned that, because um, I wasn't born with that, like you said, I totally get that. I wasn't born with that. What, what, what steps do they take on that? Yeah. Realm? I'd say the first thing is just to make a decision and be like, you know, I don't want this anymore. Mm. And then figure out what you want instead. Because if you don't want that and you don't know what you want, you won't be able to get what you want if you don't know what it is. So first thing is to do that. 
obviously, you know, it's a pretty quick process if people come and get help and all that kind of stuff. But that's the first thing is just make that decision of what you want to be and, you know, say that's what it is. But then also get curious, be like, why am I like this? Or what, where has this come from? And just start asking yourself those questions, um, you know, and just let your mind show you what you need to see sometimes. You know, sit with yourself because you have all the answers you need. It's kind of like the yin and the yang. Every problem is created with a solution. The reason it's a problem is because you can't see the solution. And so, you know, you have all the answers that you need. You might just take a little bit of time to sit with yourself and ask, like, how old was I when this happened? Or how did this happen? Um, where did I get this from? Where did I learn this from? Um, and then, you know, when you have a realization, if, if you knew exactly why you were doing something, you'd know you wouldn't need to do it anymore right mm. and you know if someone was eating emotionally to fill some kind of void if they could understand exactly what void that they were filling by eating then they could go well i don't need to do that anymore because i know what it is yeah so good man what a great question like <laughs> <laughs> that's the best um that's awesome well mate to to sort of summarize our short time together because it's i i reckon there's a ton of it i've learned heaps just with chatting to you for a little bit which is great the to tease a few more things out for my benefit and you know whoever else is listening what like any any books you're reading at the moment brendan or any 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 podcasts that jump out or anything like that yeah there's um a really cool podcast by ben pakolsky he's an old um bodybuilder he was top 10 in the world i think for a while but then he got to over 300 pounds or something and he realized like i'm not happy at this weight i'm not you know i don't like being this you know some of the big high levels have to you know do some unhealthy things i suppose to get to that level yeah so we kind of realized that and now he's so much more into intelligent muscle building um but also too he's not complete he's lost heaps of muscle heaps of weight and whatever but he goes into a lot of things around your mind and how that how that affects your everything else and he's got some cool guests on there but the thing that gets me the most is like it training is a mindfulness practice and it's almost like he sees it as a meditation because you're putting all your awareness to the body part that you're training and you're focused there it's like a it's you're creating awareness to, to your body you're expanding your awareness obviously but it's like a really nice meditating process. It's kind of different to, you know, going to the gym and slinging weight around. So learning from him is, is pretty cool. Like there's, there's it's definitely worth a listen, um, yeah, the sounds- podcast. He interviews, I think he's got one coming up with um, Martini as well. Uh, okay. So um, he's got a few guests on there. Um, in terms of books, I'm reading a lot of marketing books at the moment. So um, I think so much personal development wise. Um, but I think, you know, as we spoke earlier, I, I not probably about a week ago, I finished the 75 hard book, um, yeah. which, um, yeah, I think that's just taken the things for a few, few deeper levels, you know, and it's kind of opened my mind to a few different things of, and how things of, you know, the, the discipline just like how much discipline helps you um, and how much that can kind of change things. So those are those, the few things that I'm doing at the moment in terms of other books. uh, I don't know. I've read hard, I've read heaps. I could sit here all day. (laughs) Just with the, um, with the 75 hard, what's just a brief summary on, on that. I obviously know, know what the guts is of that. Um, Yeah. Just a little, a little overview. Yeah, so obviously there's five tasks that you got to do. Um, drink a gallon of water. It's about four liters. Um, work out twice a day, because that in itself's hard. And he kind of goes into saying like it's purifying your body. That's kind of the the idea of it. Yeah. Work out twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. One of them has to be outside. Obviously, you can't control the conditions. So you know, it's like get it done, get out there. Um, take a progress photo which kind of seems easy but the, it's like trains you to do the small things and keep focused on those small things because you know as people grow they kind of let the small little details go so that's kind of where that comes from um, stick to a diet with 
the, in terms of body composition, no yeah, cheat days, yeah. no alcohol. Just like whatever diet you're on is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it has to be in the, it has to be kind of, it can't just be like anything. It's more like with the goal of changing your, your physique or your, your body composition or your health or something. Yeah. And then finally read 10 pages of a personal development book. So there's five tasks and it kind of seems like, oh yeah, I could do that, but it's um it's pretty cool. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it, it flexes that discipline muscle. I think um having dipped my toes in the water on that one, as I was saying earlier, I I do actually remember like getting to the end of a massive day and knowing that there's still the outdoor <laughs> workout to do. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? like 12 hours you know on the tools and it's like just got to go outside and get amongst it it's like oh no god so yeah yeah it's definitely if you have a physical job but hey that could be a workout if you're outside and you've got a physical job you can that can be your, your workout you know just go a little bit harder or something for that half an hour but definitely being a physical job or being on the tools or something like that definitely would make things a bit harder yeah 100 percent Mate, that's uh that's amazing, Brendan. Your time's been super valuable. Like I said, I've I've learned a heap and uh, always do learn a heap when I'm when I'm hanging out and chatting with you. Mate, where 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 can we find you? Like where's a couple of cool handles? I know you've got some really awesome programs that are running at the moment. Um and you're a busy man, you're a man on fire. So where, where's some places we can find you, bro? Yeah, so obviously my website, advancedmensdevelopment.com you um and there's you know a few places on there different services free reports and all that kind of stuff on that page um and then on facebook too they're probably the two main things facebook is just um brendan giebel that's it about yeah. the two easiest places yeah yeah cool you do you, you do podcasts or anything at the moment you do do you have your own no i am definitely it's on the it's on my list to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've just kind of I want to get one done soon. I've just got to think about a few different things of who I want to like where I want to go with it. Yeah. I don't want to just start it for no reason and, and change it. So there's a few things I want to go and do with that, but mm. man, I've got that much on my plate that I'm like, do I really <laughs> need to add something else there? <laughs> You're probably due to go outside and do a workout too, just quietly. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Bro, thank you so much, man. It's been an honour chatting with you, mate. And um, hopefully a lot of people, well, not hopefully, people will get a ton of value, I'm sure, just from chatting to you or listening to you. Yeah. Thank you. It's been it's been fun. It's always good to chat with you. Yeah. Awesome, bro. Thanks, heaps, man. No problem.